increasing the gain variation number uh, at the input to zero to not include uh, the gain variation, but now you can keep all of your tolerance values in gain and choose to include them or not include them down here. Uh, all right, uh, these are the user formulas that spaces that you're allowed to put in your own formulas. I just put some bogus values in there just to demonstrate what's going on uh, for your own. Uh, the next section down is the pairs of uh, frequencies and powers that are calculated for the frequency response portion of the uh, spreadsheet, which includes the uh, mixers and filters. I'll go back up here to charts and use that drop down to make it fast. If you go to the frequency response chart here, that's where all those calculations come in. The, uh, the data sets that are drawn for the, all these charts are pulled from that information down there. Uh, let's see. Let me make one point about the charts real quick. This is the only scatter chart of all the charts. And Excel treats scatter charts a little differently than it does just its standard line and bar charts uh, in that when you do a, when you insert or delete columns, it does not automatically grab all that new information and put it in the data set for the chart. You have to do that manually. For all the other charts, these line and bar charts, if I were to insert a column or insert a couple columns uh, somewhere in the center here, it would automat automatically add that information to the chart. Just be aware that with the scatter charts, which the, again, the frequency response one is the only scatter chart, uh, it doesn't do that. You'll have to go in and add that data yourself. So let's go back down to the uh, uh, frequency calculations. Again, the, these are paired up in uh, there's the frequency, there's the power, there's the frequency, there's the power. Um, and these, these numbers here are all actually copied from a, a section farther down on the uh, sheet here. Here it's just all the frequencies are calculated. And then down below that, all the powers are calculated. And then they're, they're actually just reflected back up here in, in these, uh, these uh, pairs, uh, frequency power pairs. And it's done that way to make it easier to define the data sets in the frequency response chart. That's the only reason. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, notes, I have leave a place for putting notes. You put anything you want in there. And then there's another section here for user-defined specifications and calculations. Again, they're blue, so you, you have your way with them. Do whatever you need. Uh, that's about it. Uh, it's pretty simple. Again, if you're familiar with doing cascade calculations and using Excel, you shouldn't have any problems uh, on here. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. I said the icons, if you want a new icon, you just uh, come over here and select it, and do a copy, and then come over, say if I want to replace it there. Just it's, it's convenient just to click on the cell because if you do that, it'll put it the upper left corner of the icon or the graphic in the upper left corner of the cell. And I guess I can show you one more thing real quick here. Uh, for Excel, it can be uh, frustrating if you don't know how to select the graphics that are on the spreadsheet or on the worksheet. If you come down to find and select, select objects, now, instead of selecting cells, it's selecting objects, which are what all those icons are. So you can go and select all them, uh, and then uh, you can use the alignment features to go in and uh, set all the centers to the get everything all lined up. And you can use Excel, tell Excel to automatically space everything based on where the, the two end objects that are selected are, it'll evenly space everything within the middle, so that'll make it a little bit easier for you. 
that's all. Uh, the price right now introductory is $45. I put in hundreds and hundreds of hours building this and testing it and making it easier uh, for you. So even if you're used to using the higher end simulators uh, that are cost a few thousand dollars a piece, yeah, they have a lot of really great functions, but sometimes just a spreadsheet is all you need. And for $45, Everyone in the office can buy one. Hobbyists can buy them if you're a ham radio operator, build, uh, or if you're a, a field service technician or engineer and you need to be able to mock up your systems, this is a good way to do it fast. Doesn't take up much room on your computer. Uh, everything's pretty simple. Yeah, that's all. Uh, thanks again for looking at it. And uh, you can go right on to RF Cafe and pay for it via PayPal. Thanks a lot.